Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at hemocytometers, or also known as a counting chamber. So, here we are. We have our hemocytometer, or also known as a counting chamber, and what you see here is just very a thick slide. Okay, It's a very thick slide, much thicker than a typical microscope slide. And what it does have is a few parts. So we have shoulders on the sides, and in the middle we have two counting areas, or two counting chambers. Let me just get the reflection of light so you can see the two areas clearly. Okay. So there's a counting chamber here and a counting chamber here. Basically what that means is that we have some uh, etched glass in those regions that have uh, a grid. And so when we put our sample of cells in there, uh, they will be spread across that grid and we'll be able to use that grid to help us count these cells. Okay. Now, before you start using one of these things, you need to make sure that it's clean. So I've already washed it with some water, um, and I'm just going to spray it down with, a, or wash it down with a bit of ethanol. So a little bit of ethanol, and wipe it down. Now, ideally, you want to use a Kim wipe to wipe these. If you don't have a Kim wipe, you can use a paper towel. Just be aware of the fact that paper towels will ref uh, leave fibers behind. So you need to make sure that you wipe your slides very very well to try to remove as much of the dust and fibers that might be left over by these. So what we have now should be a fairly clean slide uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to then put a cover slip on it. Now I've had many students tell me in the past that they've tried this before and the cover slips they put them on and uh, these are supposed to be filled by capillary action but capillary action doesn't work. Uh, capillary action does work uh, the problem is that they weren't putting those cover slips on properly so there's a trick to this. Okay, so if you, all you do is just put your cover slip on like this. And by the way, this is just a regular cover slip. Um, we found that undergraduates are not very careful with their tools. And so these hemocytometers initially come with a thicker cover slip, which you can't really see here. here. You can't really see the thickness, but this is um, about three times to four times as thick as a regular cover slip. So they're pretty tough. Uh, unfortunately, undergraduates tend to break them fairly quickly, and so what we tend to find is that in our teaching labs, most of these will just have a regular cover slip in there. In some cases, it's going to be a broken cover slip because, you know, again, undergraduates are not very careful. So be very careful when you are applying the cover slip. I will show you in a moment the method. Okay, but again, if all you do is just put the cover slip on here, on top of the the counting chamber and just put it on the top of the shoulders. Uh, it's not good enough. This is not going to allow you to apply your sample. Okay, and the reason I know this is because if I do this, there's no more cover slip on here. The cover slip is actually down here. Okay, so you need to make sure that your cover slip is attached to your counting chamber. And so here's what you do you want to add some moisture to the shoulders of the counting chamber. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a P10 in this case. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Where's my water? There it is. I'm going to add a little bit of water to each side. So, here we go. How much? It uh, doesn't really matter. I'm going to put about one to two microliters. Again, there's no need to measure this out. Just go ahead and put a small drop on one side. Maybe a little bit bigger than this. Another drop on the other side of the shoulder. Again, you're not adding anything into the trenches, just on the shoulder itself. Okay, so again, just to be clear, this slide has these cut out grooves, those are the trenches. And so what we have is water on top of the shoulders, not inside this area here. Okay, so it's all going on to the shoulder of this slide. Now that I have a bit of moisture there, I'm going to put a cover slip on there. So let me just get rid of this tip. So here's my cover slip. I'm going to put it on top. And I'm going to apply it. And so we can see the cover slip is on there. And we're not quite there yet. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put my thumbs over the cover slip where the shoulders are. So don't, not in the middle, don't press in the middle. I'm going to apply a bit of pressure, not a lot, a little bit of pressure, and just going to move it back and forth. Okay, so the more water you put in here, the longer this is going to take. The less water you put in here, the less it's going to take. What you're trying to do is basically just move it back and forth 
until this cover slip doesn't want to move very much anymore. Okay, once it starts to give you resistance to movement, it's probably when it's attached fairly well. What we're trying to do is we're trying to replicate this effect when you have two sheets of glass, like for example, two microscope slides that are stuck together. Okay, there was a bit of moisture between them initially. Uh, there was no dust between them. So again, it's very important that you have a cover slip that is clean. So wash it with some water first and then just um, wash it with some ethanol, wipe it down carefully and gently. Don't break the cover slip. Those break very easily. And right now on the, on the left hand side, it's starting to give me a bit of resistance. The right hand side is still moving a little bit, but not a lot. So again, I'm applying a bit of pressure, a fair bit of pressure at this point. So again, there's still a bit of movement here. So I'm going to continue. But it's starting at this point to not want to move very much. Okay, so I'm getting, getting to a point where this thing is relatively attached. I'm trying to see if I have Newton's rings. Okay, so again, Newton's rings are a sign that your you, your slide is well attached. Um, unfortunately, it's very difficult to really capture that on a camera like this, so I'm not going to be able to show you this. Ah, there they are. Here we go. Upper corner and lower corner, right there, you can see Newton's rings. There they are. That's what you're looking for. Right at the bottom of the shoulder and right at the top, you can see them alternating light and dark lines. They're not quite black and white, they're kind of white and colored. No way. Let's see the other side as well. You can make them out here as well. Okay, so there they are finally. It took a while. I was able to capture them. I hope I'm recording this. Okay, so those are Newton's rings. That's what you're looking for. To prepare your sample, you have some cell culture. Oops, where is it? There it is. You have some cell culture here, so you have some cells. Now again, make sure you distribute them well before using them. You don't want to have all your cells sitting in a pellet at the bottom of the tube. If your tube's been sitting around for a while, they're all going to be at the bottom. So make sure you distribute them well. And you have some tripan blue. Okay? So I'm going to take an epi tube. And I'm going to add 20 microliters of my cell culture. So I'm going to, this is a P10, by the way, some, a P10. So I'm going to use this twice. Okay? So I'm going to take my pipette up, up and down a little bit just to make sure. And to my tube. Again, do it again. You want to make sure that your cells are well distributed so that you're taking a fair sample of what's inside this tube. Okay. So I have my cell sample in here, 20 microliters. I'm going to dilute this. In our case, I'm going to dilute this with 20 microliters of tripan blue. I'm not expecting a very um, concentrated culture, so I'm going to just use 20 microliters. Again, this is a P10, so I'm going to take 10 microliters and 10 microliters, so we're going to pipe it twice. I'm going to set it on the side of the tube so I don't have to change my tip every time. Do it twice. Remove the tip. So my trap in blue goes away. So here's my sample. I'm going to just tap this down. Okay, and so there is my diluted sample. So keep in mind again that this is half of the concentration of here. Okay, so this is the original sample. This is what you want to know the concentration of. You want to know how many cells per milliliter are there in this tube. What you are going to find out when you do your cell count is how many cells per milliliter you have in this tube. So you're going to first do the count for this and then you're going to convert that concentration to this by multiplying by the dilution factor. In our case again the dilution factor is two times Again, if we use a different amount of tripan blue compared to this, we will be looking at a different dilution factor. So you're going to have to figure that out for yourself if you're ever doing this with a different dilution factor. Okay, okay you can see the cover slip on it. That's important. I want you to see where I'm adding this. And again, we're going to be looking at capillary action in action. Okay, so here's my sample. I'm going to drop a drop of liquid next to the cover slip. So it's important to understand, I'm not trying to inject this underneath. I'm just putting a drop of liquid next to the cover slip. And the fact that we have a well-placed cover slip is going to allow for
cover for the um, capillary action to take place. There it goes. So again, I'm not trying to put things under the cover slip, I'm not trying to inject anything. I'm putting the drop of liquid next to the cover slip and it's just sucking it up. I'm going to keep adding until this point here. At this point, my counting chamber is filled. So I'm not going to add any more. I, I took out 10 microliters. I have less than 10 microliters in the counting chamber. Again, I can't tell you what volume to put in here because depending on where your cover slip ends up on this, uh, you may have a larger or smaller volume in here. So 10 microliters to start off with and then just start by petting carefully until you fill the whole thing. Okay, and then you stop. So again, I'm just going to put this back in and I'm going to again just pipe it up and down a little bit a couple of times to make sure I distribute these cells well or suspend them well. And again, I'm going to apply them to the second chamber now. And again, I'm going to, okay, here, I guess you can see where that cover slip ends. So I'm going to put a drop right next to the cover slip. Okay, so next to the cover slip here. And I'm not still far, oh, there it is. Okay, and I can stop. Okay. So here we have two counting chambers filled. They're ready to be looked at under the microscope. There's one more thing I want to talk, tell you about. We have two types of these slides. So these are two count, sets of counting chambers. This one at the bottom is the one we just used. Oh, you can actually see the grid. In this case here on both sides, there's some of the etching is visible on this slide right now. Okay, there it is. Uh, so the one at the bottom is the one we just filled. The one at the top is a different um, supplier, I guess, a different manufacturer. They both work the same way. There's a grid on here as well. The one at the top has a more mirrored surface. So it's actually a little bit easier to see and find the grids under the microscope. Uh, but in this case here, the shoulders are actually frosted, so it's going to be very difficult for you to get that attachment from the cover slip. So you're probably going to struggle with these ones a little bit more. Uh, in terms of cover slip attachment, uh, they tend to work much better with the heavier, larger, uh, thicker cover slips. Uh, the thinner cover slips don't really stick to them very well, and so you might struggle with that one. Uh, this also, you can see here, has an attachment point, or not attachment point, but but kind of guides for where to put in your sample. So you'd be putting your, your drop of liquid in here and in here, and again, that would get sucked up by the cover slip by capillary action, okay? So that's just where there to guide your pipette tip so that you know where to add the sample, okay? So let me just show you what the two of them look like under the microscope, okay? So I'll start with this one first so that you can see uh, the grid. Okay, so here we are, uh, our chambers under the microscope. We just need to get into focus. And so uh, this can be a little tricky to focus initially, so I suggest that you do this without the cover slip on there first. So before you even have the cover slip, before you apply your sample, uh, clean your chamber, put under the microscope, get into focus first. So we're going to use the coarse focus and bring the stage up as far as we can. So I'm going to get my head down next to the stage so I can see how close we get. We don't want to get too close. So close as I'm willing to go right now. Let's see if I can get this to focus now in the other direction. So I'm going to move the stage downwards. Okay, and so I'm going to start focusing. Let's see if I can get anything into focus. I'm going to try moving my stage back and forth a little bit just so if something comes into focus, I can try to s stop at that point. I can kind of see something moving about. Okay. Okay. So now I just need to find my counting area. I'm focused on. There it is. Okay, so now we're focused. So I was going to save this tip for later, but that's one thing you can do is try to put the, one of the trenches close to your field of view. So you can see here that 
right now under the microscope I have kind of an edge of the counting area visible okay and so what you're looking at is this dark line under the microscope and you can start using a focus to see okay I'm going to keep on focusing until I see this ground glass become more of a sharp edge and that's what I'm seeing here now remember everything under the microscope is reversed so even though I'm seeing that the actual slide when I'm looking at this under a stage the uh, counting chamber is to the right and the trench is on the left when you look at, through the, look at it through the microscope, you're going to see that the trench is on the right and the covers uh, the counting area is on the left. Okay, so everything's reversed under the microscope, which is why I could tell that when I had it like this, I need to be looking for things that are going to be sharp for me. The edges, sharp edges should be on the left and not on the right. So this is why I'm turning and turning until I see yeah, I can see the, the, the part that's in focus is going towards the left more and more as I'm getting closer and closer to having it in focus at the right level, and here it is. And I can actually see the lines of the counting chamber right now. And so here we go. This is the middle of the counting chamber. Okay, so unfortunately I don't have a smaller lens or a lower power lens to show you the whole thing, so we're going to only be looking at this at the 10x magnification. This is the middle portion of the, the lens, of, sorry, the middle portion of the counting chamber. So you're going to be counting this large square here. You will also be counting the cells in this square here, in this large square here, in this large square here, and this large square here. And that'll be five squares and then you will move on to the next counting chamber so I'm going to go across the division between the two counting chambers and here's the second counting chamber and again count the cells in here in here in here in here and then the middle large square okay so now in this case here I didn't need to do anything special with the microscope to see these lines. That's just because the, the surface is very highly polished and so there's a very clear um, distinction between the lines here. Um, so that's the nice thing about this particular accounting chamber is that you have a very highly polished sort of surface, a highly mirrored surface, and so you have a very obvious distinction between the lines and the background. Okay. Now let me put in the other chamber just so you can see the difference between them. Okay, and so here's the other one now. And so again, you need to get into get into focus. So I'm going to just move this slide back and forth, and I can see something here. I'm going to bring it into focus. And do we see any lines here? Well, if you have good eyes, then yes. And by the way, those things that you can see there, those are fibers from the paper towel. Okay, so again, this is why you want to clean with a Kim wipe more than the paper towel, because the paper towel will leave behind these little uh, fibers. Okay, so when you have one of these chambers that I'm using right now, what you want to do is you want to increase your contrast. And you do that by using this adjustment um, slider here. This uh, this closes the uh, condenser field, uh, condenser iris diaphragm. Okay, and by doing that, you actually increase the contrast on your slide. Okay, so again, uh, you can use both of these chambers, and you will be able to see things fairly well. But it's much easier with the the other one. It's much more polished. This one again, the same idea. Here's the center square, and then you have the sides. But again, in this case, with these chambers, you do need to make sure you increase your contrast significantly in order to be able to see the, the lines on your slide. And so again, you do this by using this slider here. Again, this closes off the condenser iris diaphragm. And so as you can see, if you look just at the light passing through into the objective lens, if you look at that, more light is passing through this way. We decrease contrast as we move the slider back across to the right. 
it's closing off and as it's doing that it's increasing the contrast that you can see here okay so that's what we're looking for when you are using these slides okay so hopefully that has been helpful we'll see you in the next video okay